so the more evenly distributed your inoculation points are, the more quickly and evenly the mycelium will colonize the log because it's going to search in every area for itself. And when the mycelial network links up, they'll join forces and, and more completely, more rapidly colonize the log. <laughs> Yeah, so if you just look, I've just kind of offset my rows, so what you end up with is equilateral triangles all the way around the log, and that gives you the most even distribution of inoculation points. That's the general idea. So you basically do a row, and then in between those rows, about as equidistant as you can get it, do the next row, and then offset it so the next ones are going to go here, 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 and maybe some on the ends. Let's we'll see how I'm feeling. Yep. So uh, when we're doing the spawn injection, just kind of take your spawn injector, shove it in the bag of sawdust spawn, and then plunge it into the hole. And then you go for the next one. And then once these are all full of mycelium, then we go back and put some uh, put some wax on there. So I'll go get the wax now. So the nice thing about this cheese wax is that it's soft and malleable enough that you can soften it with your fingers and you don't need to mess with crock pots or uh, messy stove tops and things like that. You just kind of soften it with your fingers, shove so it in the hole, make sure the whole surface is sealed. Once you've got the whole surface sealed, um, that's enough to keep the moisture from escaping and that's all you need. So once you've got the logs all uh, inoculated and waxed and sealed up, you're going to want to keep them out of direct contact with the soil so that bugs and other competing fungi and bacteria don't have such easy access to them. That being said, you do want to keep them from drying out, so oftentimes I'll set them side by side as close as possible on either bricks or a pallet and then you can wrap the ends with a tarp but leave the top open so that it gets access to rain and the fluctuations in temperature will also create condensation that keeps the logs nice and moist. Um, in the times that things are extra dry we'll be able to access this spring here and just do a little slow steady drip irrigation once the mushrooms have fully colonized and the spawn run is complete, we'll set them up on uh, little racks like this, on a little A-frame kind of idea. And what this does is it facilitates ease of harvest. So we're able to pick mushrooms as they fruit from all sides of the logs. You'll also want to be checking near the base of your logs as that's where the most moisture accumulates. And so oftentimes I find my biggest shiitakes and oyster mushrooms right near the ground. And shiitakes in particular, when there's leaf litter down, it can be tough to see them. So be sure to check around there. And uh, yeah, good luck with your mushroom cultivation endeavors. Did you sign the waiver? <laughs> <laughs> Tarzan yeah. man. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you don't need a gym when you've got grapevines around. <laughs>